One of the uh, extremely crucial aspects of the Palestinian struggle is the fact that Palestine as a society, as a people, as a struggle against occupation and oppression is multicultural, is multi-ethnic, is multi-religious, and that whilst for some reason the mainstream media seem to be uh, intent on displaying this as some sort of binary conflict between Jews and Muslims, in fact at the very heart of the struggle is the story of the Christian community of Palestine. And for some reason, for some reason, this is something that is either negated deliberately or probably um, naively, but it's extremely instrumental to trying to understand when we talk about an apartheid system, such as B'Tselem, for instance, the Israeli human rights organization described the Israeli state, such as many organizations around the world describe the Israeli states, that this apartheid means the oppression of all the communities that make up the other side, i.e. the Palestinians. Your visit uh, to the United Kingdom comes uh, at a time when I, I, I personally think this needs to be addressed. And coming from Jerusalem, particularly. Of course, you know. Thank you, um, Anas. I think you know there is misperception uh, by many that the conflict is religious and not land. Mm. I'm always, you know, careful to say the conflict is political, not religious. Mm. And uh, this is a very important uh, topic that you are raising. And we have to deal with it. For us Christians, we have been living in the country since 2,000 years, yep. even before Islam, yep. you see. It's the very birthplace of Christianity. Birth of Christianity. And if you read the Bible, uh, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verse 11, it says that the Holy Spirit was bestowed on the, on the Arabs. And the Arabs existed all the time, and they were witnessing... Uh, uh, for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in all the time. So this factor is forgotten mm. and that we are an integral part and even original component forgotten of the Arab, of the Arab Palestinian fabric. Yes, uh, forgotten deliberately. Yes, I think it's deliberately, mm. uh, you know, um, uh, in order to show that uh, uh, as we said uh, earlier, you see that the uh, conflict is religious. Mm. And, w you know, we, we refuse that it's religious. Mm. You know, I am, for example, I'm a Palestinian refugee. Uh, um, since uh, in, in 1948, we used to be 30 families, Christian families in Bir Sheba. Yes. Bir Sheba, yeah. Bir Sheba. Bir Sheba. And then... All the 30 families immigrated, mm. you know, to Bethlehem area or to Jerusalem. Mm. And um, so I also carry UNRWA, United Nations Refugee Welfare Association card, but I never used it, you see. Um, and which I don't use it for two reasons, because the Palestinian cause is not charity. Mm. We don't want the crumbs yes. of the world to give me some flour. Some, <clears throat> on the contrary, the church educated me, the Lutheran Church, mm. and empowered me to work for struggle either in Palestine or in the whole world. Mm. And that's very crucial to understand, and especially when we speak with the Europeans who are speaking about the immigration in this part of the world. I'm telling them two reasons: that first of all. You are responsible, the Western countries are responsible. They never solved the issues, neither in the Middle East, nor in Africa, nor in Asia. Yeah. So what do you expect when they come to the, you have to care for them. And secondly, you have to empower them, educate them to work for justice mm. for their countries. And these are crucial things, crucial things for the, for the mind. Today, we are living a very dangerous, you know, junction because at the moment, there are 110 ref, mil, 10 million refugees in the world. Mm. It used to be less yes. five years ago. Yes. So this means the world has failed to bring justice 
to, and peace to the world. Right. And the politicians have been a failure at this moment because they care for their interests. They don't care for justice. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. They care only for their economic interests, yeah. but don't care for the justice that there is, the, the, for, for justice for Palestinians. Mm. Makram, you're an academic and uh, you're someone who understands the dominant narrative within the UK, particularly, but the West generally. And when it comes to the issue of Palestine, it seems, and, I, and, and my question to His Grace, Dr. Munib, just a second ago, what is this deliberate, the omitting of this element of the struggle, of the Palestinian struggle? Mm. Is this deliberate or not? <clears throat> it seems to me that the narrative has so many gaps and those gaps need, need, need filling. Uh, you're observant of uh, His Grace's tour, this, this particular visit and his meeting with uh, officials and the such. What was, uh, well, first of all, your take on this, but secondly, what, how did you find the general response to, mm. uh, to what His Eminence said? Yeah, a few, a few very important points. Um, to start with, um, a few years ago, when we established the Cambridge Center for Palestine Studies, we thought that uh, there is one element uh, which has been absent, mm. uh, which is the Palestinian Christian element. Uh, and we thought that it's very vital to start discussing it, researching it. And therefore, we, we launched a program uh, where we started uh, discussing um, and inviting uh, bishops and priests, Palestinian bishops and priests, as well as involving uh, British uh, clergymen, including uh, the 104th Archbishop of Canterbury, yes. Lord Rowan Williams, who yes. is one of our patrons yeah. and very important uh, researcher and theologian. We thought that it's very important as well to invite um, His Eminence, uh, uh, Dr. Munib, because first of all, he speaks English, yes. unlike other clergymen, they speak either Italian or and I, German. And I have to say it is a problem yes. when it comes to presenting Palestinian yeah. faces you know, of, of yeah. the struggle that can reflect what's yeah. happening in a, in a way yeah. that is clear to the Western audience. Yes, it's very important. And secondly, I think that <clears throat> Western audience, as well as British audience, they uh, look differently when uh, a Palestinian Christian clergyman comes and speaks with them nearly exactly in the same language that any other Palestinian Muslim speaks, but all of a sudden they realize that the struggle isn't religious, it's a national struggle. That's right. Oh, he's actually a bishop, he's mm -hmm. Palestinian, he's Christian, he's Arab, so, and he speaks in the same way. So all of a sudden you see that the room or the um, <laughs> audience start to understand that actually it's not something that they should look at negatively, they should understand and embrace. And this is one aspect that we have been noticing in the last week during um, uh, Bishop Munib's visit to the UK. You see that people are slightly more receptive um, to what he is saying, um, because he's saying it nearly in the same way but the medium, i.e. his grace, is a different um, medium. To but the traditional one that is usually mm. uh, shown on screens. Yes, you know? yes, so indeed. Usually, you know, in, in, in the Western countries and even many Muslim countries don't understand the role of Arab Palestinian Christians. Mm. So, for example, I always introduce myself you know, I'm an Arab, Palestinian, Christian, Evangelical, Lutheran, mm -hmm. and Evangelical, you know, and Palestinian refugee. This is strange, yes. you know. And we have been all the time working, you know, <clears throat> on development and humanitarian aid and education. Mm -hmm. For example, Palestinian Christians' role in the society is very active society. We have 200, 96 uh, institutions, even if we are 1%, we are- This here. is throughout Palestine? Throughout Palestine. Even if we are 1%, yeah. these 296 organizations are serving 
um, um, are serving, uh, uh, they have educational ministry, schools, universities, hospitals, for example. The Lutheran Church owns a, a hospital, Augusta Victoria, Al-Muttara, yes. at Mount of Olives. That's the only cancer center for Palestinians in Gaza, in the West Bank, you know, and so on. So, um, and our services, even if we are 1%, um, are the 90% of our, you know, beneficiaries are non-Christian. Yes. So we don't serve ourselves because we are an <coughs> integral part yes. of our society and we are serving our society. Yeah. And many of the, even the politicians who are today in Palestine or so on, they were educated in our schools. Yeah. So, so you understand, you know, that we have a role to play and we are playing that role, but maybe it's not known in many places. Absolutely. I, I mean, I for one, I for one, I have long realized that uh, Palestinian Christians as being, let's say, the original inhabitants of Palestine um, are an integral part of the struggle. And it, and it often uh, bemused me how that this, this chapter, this element of the, of the, pa of the, of the Palestinian story mm. was omitted. Mm. That, uh, you know, even edu educated or so-called educated politicians, activists, human rights, mm -hmm. uh, you know, experts or the mm -hmm. such, omitted to mention mm -hmm. that as much as a Muslim Palestinian family are oppressed anywhere in Palestine, there is also a Christian family that are also equally oppressed mm -hmm. by. Take me back to Jerusalem, okay. where you are currently resident and where you, as you said, you are a refugee. Yes. Um, but take me to Jerusalem. This is the epicenter yes. of, of Palestine. Yes. It is the epicenter of, um, over the past three, four years particularly, the world's, you know, whether, whether it be the invasions of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, whether it be the confiscation of lands, uh, Hajjara, and, and the others, churches. <clears throat> as well as the churches and the such. Tell me a little bit about this. Yes. I think we take, for example, this year, mm. Already this year, there have been eight attacks on Christian institutions and churches. Mm. And of course, I did, we did not count also the, uh, some of the extremist uh, Israeli settlers who are uh, spitting on us when we have our own crosses. You see. Yeah. And uh, in, uh, 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 whilst you're wa walking on the street, walking on the street, they see the cross, they spit on us. I think there are many things. Well, I mean, or oh, they see the nuns as well as they harass them. Yeah, well, I, you know, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the authorities know the perpetrators and those perpetrators are enjoying the privilege of impunity. Yes. And you see, that's what makes it more, uh, more, more complex. Secondly, um, there are attacks on, uh, there are twisted deals uh, on Jaffa Gate or new or new gate uh, for the orthodox property where they want to take it now if they will confiscate you know uh, the two hotels at jaffa gate which are the petra hotel imperial owned by the orthodox church we are afraid for the local and international route um, of pilgrimage to the holy sepulcher mm. now what we see as palestinian christians even the churches, it's all connected. It's connected with what the incursions in the Haram al-Sharif. We believe as Christian churches, not only Palestine in the whole Middle East, as the Holy Sepulchre is only for the Christians, mm. uh, al-Haram al-Sharif is only for the Muslims. That's our, so the attacks are, uh, what, what happens to us is also tied with Sheikh Jarrah. Silwan, Isawiyye, uh, Bustan, Hayil Bustan. So the idea what we are saying, it is Judaizing mm. East Jerusalem. As one of the settlers said, that we want East Jerusalem to become like West Jerusalem. So that's the reason we are, uh, we are alerting the world that please, um, we don't have to lose the mosaic of Jerusalem. Mm the diversity of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem can never be for one religion and one nation. Yeah. 
Jerusalem um, should enjoy the diversity which we have always lived there and we are living and Jerusalem should be the epicenter of justice, not epicenter of injustice. Yes. I'd add perhaps to what um, uh, His Eminence said um, that it's part of a, of a master plan. And as, um, what we see every day, we think that these are just uh, scattered issues. They aren't. Uh, I think this is part of a well-organized, uh, well-prepared master plan to seize all of Al-Quds, Jerusalem, west and east, north and south, in order to totally Zionize it, Judaize it, Israelize it, call it the way you wish. And in particular, they do want to eliminate the Arab-Palestinian Christian presence. Because if they weaken and eliminate, or first eliminate, um, they will uh, portray the com so-called conflict, although it's not conflict, it's occupation, let's yeah. just face it. Yeah. They'll portray it as if as it's a religious conflict between Muslims and Jews, and in this way, through the media and their narrative, they will say that uh, it'll be easier, possibly, to say that, oh, these uh, so-called Muslims are terrorists, yeah. they are violent, and we Jews, we are really, we are love, uh, peace-loving, and look how we are being yeah. harassed. And then they think that the world will actually side uh, by, by, by them. Uh, whereas if the struggle remains uh, uh, in this way, tripartite, including Palestinian Christians, I think it will be difficult for the Zionist plan to be implemented because there is always an Arab-Palestinian voice which is saying, look, we Christians, we are part of the Palestinian Arab people. We are united with our, with our uh, Muslims who are Palestinian Arabs. And this is one struggle, one national struggle. We have one narrative. And um, this will make their lives, the lives of the Zionists, a little bit more difficult. Yeah. The trouble is that they are trying to weak a Palestinian, well, they are trying to weak all Palestinians in, in Al-Quds in particular, but they are trying to weaken Palestinian Christians in, in two ways. First, they'd like to seize as much as lands and properties as they can. In many ways, his eminence uh, used the term twisted deals. They are more than twisted, I think. Um, and on the other hand, all these threats and harassment and violence and aggression against Palestinian Christians and Christianity in Al-Quds in particular aim to cause migration. Yeah, mm. yeah. And if, mm. and, 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 and Bishop Dr. Manib can, can tell us about yes. this. We used to be 12% of the total population. Mm. At the moment, within Palestine. Within his, Palestine. Yeah. Palestine proper. Yeah, Palestine, pro yeah. historic Palestine, yes. let's say, in this way, you know. And now we are 1% of the total population. Mm. So... O over what kind of time? This... Uh, this uh, I think, you know, um, I could say over 30 years, mm. you know. Uh, so um, what are the reasons of the immigration? Mm. There are what our surveys and studies say. There are four main reasons. The, one, the first one is the, uh, the, the, the absence of a vision for justice and peace in Palestine. By whom? By the international community. Mm. The, locally, we don't see, you know, there is no peace in the horizon. Uh, uh, you know, President, when President Biden visited, you know, uh, President Mahmoud Abbas, and, and you have maybe noticed in the press conference, he said, it's not now time for peace. So when is the time for peace if it's not now? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, secondly, uh, the economic situation. Mm. We are living under difficult economic situation. <clears throat> um, 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 unemployment is very high in the West Bank and in Gaza, you see. Some say in Gaza is up to 60% unemployment and in the, in the West Bank up to 30% or 33%. So that's worrying. Um, the, third thing, the third thing is the measures of occupation, like treatment at check posts, uh, like, you know, confiscation of land, demolition of, of homes, or reunification permits. 
yeah. for families yeah. who who are non citizens yeah. and um, and non residents when they marry, uh, you know, with a resident or a citizen, what the what the church or the most solemnize, the uh, uh, the government does not give them to live, you know, together in Jerusalem, yeah. and. Most you know, they could be just a couple of miles miles yeah. down the road, but they can't. They cannot, you see. And of course, they they need to have a reunification permit. And we know mm. that last year, the government cancelled if any kind of reunification permit permits. That means, and that affects more Christians. Yeah. That means they pack, and Go. immigrate, yeah. immigrate majorly, to Canada, United States, and Australia. Mm. And Australia, and the fourth reason for that is the growth of extremism both in Israel and Palestine. Mm. So you can notice from the survey that it's all linked with the occupation. Mm. So I mean, if the occupation ends, I'm sure people will not immigrate. If they have their own rights, their human rights, they can live uh, as normal human being. They can live as a normal British. Uh, in in their country, having all their rights. Mm -hmm. When you are living and your rights are violated, yeah. so I mean, you, I mean, maybe maybe I can uh, survive, make survive there. I can. I am strong in the sumud, but not every Christian family or Muslim family is like this. Yeah. When they find everything, every door is closed, so they pack and leave. And Absolutely. and uh, what is the Holy Land? What is Palestine without Palestinian Christians? That's very serious. Yeah. And that's what we are promoting, that we are asking people to come, but I cannot ask them as long as there is no justice. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Makram, uh, His Grace, Dr. Muneeb, mentioned the lack of a vision. Um, what then is the role of let's say, the Palestinian Authority. I mean, okay, fine. We know that the, the, the so-called international community is in disarray. It's in disarray over many, many things, of course, at the very center of those, and probably the oldest of the conflicts, uh, but struggles against occupation, is the Palestine issue. But, 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 you, know, but you, know, you, know, you know, the world, one, one important thing, the world is no more seeing and even the Arab countries and Muslim countries, yeah. that the center of the of, of the conflicts in the world in in the Middle East is the Palestinian yeah. cause. They are no more seeing this, yes. and that's the seriousness. That's of the it. seriousness. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, I really no, no, it's it's absolutely a valid point. I I agree with you, mm. and I would add that first of all, there is the internal the internal aspect, but there is as well the external aspect. The internal aspect, just to, to be uh, uh, honest and sound as well uh, as somebody who is logical and is passing uh, self-criticism, yeah, we, we do have the uh, internal Palestinian division <coughs> excuse me, between uh, the two areas, let's say the Gaza Strip, which is totally besieged, and um, the uh, occupied and besieged West Bank and the and East Jerusalem. So there is the internal division which exists, and there is as well the internal weakness. The Palestinian Authority um, is very weak. Uh, they are weak because they are dependent on either uh, Arab donors such as Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, the Emirates, etc., and they are weak because they are as well dependent on EU and American money. As long as they are weak financially, they are controlled politically. So this is quite a very important uh, aspect. Now, this is the internal, the internal side, but there is as well the international element that uh, His Grace has been, has been witnessing now during his visit in, in Britain. Uh, you see, Anas, um, the European Union, as well as the UK, they do believe in the so-called two-state solution. Yeah. But, and yes, truly, every time they keep repeating it like a mantra. Yeah. But does it have teeth? No. All the, time, the, more, the more they repeat it, it's an indication that the Israeli occupation is intensifying yeah. its aggression. But on the other hand, the more they are repeating it, the more the Israeli occupation is intensifying building settlements. Yeah. So this so-called two-state solution 
is diminishing, Absolutely. in fact, on the ground. Smotrich, the minister of finance of the Israeli occupation government, has just announced that they are going to build 155 new settlements. Where on earth the Palestinian state will exist? So even if we agree, even if those who agree on a two-state solution, in only in 22% of original historical Palestine, if you take, if you deduct from the 22%, the so-called land allocated area A, area B, area C, yeah. for the Palestinian state, where is it going to take place if it's full of uh, settlements, colonial settlements by colonizers whose number are now nearly one million? So this is why I believe that the mantra of two-state solution by the EU and the UK and the likes of the US and the so-called dead quartet is actually only um, like uh, um, a medicine which actually is being renewed only to neutralize Palestinian ambitions. Mm -hmm. And this is quite a serious matter. And, and the, the crucial part of this is that it continues to offer Israel time. Yes. And time is what allows it then to continue to build settlements, to encroach on yeah. lands, to confiscate homes and the such. So that bit by bit, just like you've said, uh, Makram, the two-state solution becomes a title with no substance. It becomes you know, almost impossible. I have always also criticized the division between Hamas and Fatah. Mm. Uh, and uh, I always said, and I continue to say, that this division is a shame for us Palestinians, mm. and it deepens the occupation. It doesn't really help anybody. And there were many trials, you know, to uh, reconcile. You were, you were part of I'm the delegation. I'm part of the delegation who, to reconcile. Unfortunately, we failed. Mm. I mean, so what is more important, you know, than to unite at this moment when there are the, cha the political challenges all over the world are very serious. Today, the world is more caring, you know, for Ukraine yeah. uh, than yeah. invasion, than caring maybe for the Palestinian cause because sometimes the world has a double standard, you see. So uh, if we Palestinians, we have to find ways and means how to reconcile and become one entity, not two entities, uh, two, two entities. I hope our politicians, you know, in Palestine will, will reconcile quickly and understand what's going around them and not living, you know, um, like the ost ostrich saying everything is, is, is good around us. No, I think this is very important for me. Secondly, you know, uh, it's important today to ask maybe the EU and UK uh, to, to recognize Palestine on 1967 borders yeah. with, with, uh, uh, with East Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Palestine. That's very important. Then the dynamics will change. But and, as and long this is in line with UN resolution. Exactly, 242338, and you just, <clears throat> yeah. just named them. I think that's, that's very important. Mm. Then the dynamics will change. But as long as we are getting only lip service, yeah. Oh, we want two states. Where? We want two state solution, mm. you know. Um, and uh, what hope are you giving to the Palestinians? Mm. What hope are you giving them that, uh, that things are going to, ch to change? I think uh, th there is pessimism, you know, among Palestinians in general, mm. you know, either in Jerusalem or in the West, or in the West Bank. Or there is pessimism because they see that they are left alone. Yeah. And, so, and, so, and the issue is not money. The issue is political will. Is there political will by the international community, United States of America, EU, UK, and others to solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict or not? If they are, they, they, we need, as Palestinians, we demand an answer, not lip service. I, I agree with you, and undoubtedly, you see, uh, uh, Your Eminence, uh, uh, but you see, I, I keep, uh, telling um, uh, Bishop Dr. Munib that it's true, undoubtedly, that the div internal division is 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 uh, negative, is unhealthy, and it needs to be sorted. But uh, I also hasten to add that uh, this division did not exist when um, the late Yasser Arafat was alive. Uh, there was no division. 
and still the Israeli occupation besieged him, his headquarters, and led to his 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 killing, his his martyrdom, his death. Call it the way you wish. So, indeed, the division is negative. It should. And, however, it's being used by external powers. Nonetheless, if the EU and the international community are really serious about um, implementing international law, they should come and say, these are the resolutions, they are UN resolutions, according to international law, let's recognize the state of Palestine at least Uh, according to 242338 UN resolutions. And if we recognize the state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital, then there will be new dynamics. Exactly. But they are not even doing this. Exactly. exactly. I think, I mean, uh, I, I'd like to, I mean, pick on this particular point uh, regarding the internal division. Um, I mean, it seems to me that uh, the, the party that is really divides is the international community. I mean, the Palestinian, the fact that there are, um, you, you call it divisions, variations of, uh, of, of interpretation of what the national project is or the such, whatever you may call it. But in actual fact, like you put it, I mean, the fact is that the international community cannot, for some reason, We can, we can each come to our own conclusions. But for some reason, the international community cannot stand by or implement its own decisions, its own resolutions. I agree. It's telling in, in, in this whole I thing. I agree. And the fact, I mean, I, I was in parliament a few months ago and we were talking about this to a number of MPs. And, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned to them that the, the, the fact that a people under so much oppression are divided into only two If you're mentioning, you know, the PA and Hamas, that, that's, that's a blessing. That's, that counts in favor of the people it's, uh, themselves. I, I think there is a difference between having different factions and parties yes. and division. Yes. I mean, we have to not to underestimate it. It's very serious. Mm. It's a wound in the palm of, yes. Palestin in, uh, uh, in the palm of, pa of Palestinians. And, um, and uh, we need to so because we should not give the international community an excuse mm -hmm. uh, to say, with whom shall we negotiate? That is true. Uh, with whom shall we do? They, they use it as an excuse yes. um, uh, in order not to go forward. Uh, that's the reason it is, it is very important, to the, very significant, very crucial for Palestinians to find ways and means to put a common strategy for reconciliation in order that we face the challenges which are coming today. Uh, to, 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 the challenges today are different than they were on the, in the time of Yasser Arafat. Mm. Then the time, the challenges are very serious. If we don't, uh, we don't understand the context in which we are living, I'm afraid mm. that no solution will be there. And that's not good for our people because our people are looking for justice and only justice. Yes. There is no doubt that there has been serious change, serious shift in public opinion in the West. But we do differentiate. How, how do you see that, by the way? Um, I, you know, you can, I, I do researches. I uh, have published quite a bit about uh, the image of the Palestinian mm. cause, about the coverage of, of British media and other Western media of the Palestinian struggle. I can see a very serious shift in public opinion in favor of the Palestinian people. There is no doubt about it. The problem is that this political shift has not been coming through yeah. from the corridors of power and from governments. This is quite serious. And why? I believe in two, in two reasons. The first reason, economic ties uh, between the EU in general and Uh, some uh, say Israeli interest groups, economic or Israeli or Jewish interest groups. And this, uh, the second point is the so-called uh, argument of anti-Semitism. Yes. Anything you, yes. you use, any sentence you use in favor of Palestine, anti-Semitism. It's, it's been weaponized. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but I think that we need to attack this. Mm. First of all, we shouldn't agree to mix between Judaism, Jews, and the 
Israeli occupation. These are three different things. True. We do understand. I master Hebrew. I know the Bible. I know very well. And I can give lectures about it. We shouldn't. And the very fact that they are weaponizing it mm. is actually immoral, illegal, and should be attacked and attacked logically mm -hmm. and attacked scientifically. We need to explain to the world that we are not anti-Judaism, we are not anti-Jews, but certainly if you claim that you are against the occupation of Ukraine, then Ukraine should wait a little bit. It's only less than two years old. We have been queuing for 75 years. Come and help us if you are against occupation. You cannot have this double standards and this immoral approach uh, and it's hypocrisy, sure. in, in short. So please comment and help us. And if you say that you want to implement UN resolutions, come and implement them. Because otherwise, all Palestinians will start saying, hang on a minute, you are not uh, agreeing for a two-state solution. All of Palestine has been occupied. Hundreds of settle colonial settlements are there. So, so what do we do? Do we opt to a one-state solution? And even if it's a one-state solution, it's an apartheid state. Will you accept it? So the thing is that there is more work which, which needs to be done amongst the corridors of powers. Mm. And I believe had the Arab world and the Muslim world, well, you know, the, these are two amorphous, amorphous yeah. de descriptions, been pressurizing European governments to accept the, the two-state solution, they would have accepted it. The thing is that, sadly, the Islamic world and the Arab world are not, in brackets, weaponizing yeah. their economic power in order to implement justice in Palestine. True. Only the money from the Gulf could have ended the occupation in 72 hours and installed the Palestinian state True. instead of normalizing with, with a, a government which is an occupation government known for its apartheid and its daily aggression and killing against Palestinian people. This, what should be done by Muslims in the world and by the Arab world, sadly, they are not using their financial resources in order to implement uh, all these uh, UN resolutions. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that um, uh, this internal division, I just want to touch on this and then move on, but sure. the internal division, you said that it wouldn't have happened during the lifetime of Yasser Arafat. Um, is it since Oslo? Is it the Oslo Agreement? There, there is, uh, look, some, some people, uh, well, first of all, had, had you asked me, I wouldn't have signed on, on Oslo, certainly, I wouldn't have. Um, some people say the very fact that Oslo was signed allowed, say, I don't know, 10, 3, 30,000 Palestinians to return to Palestine. So they see it as a positive Act. Even one businessman told me, at least we have now a so-called Palestinian passport. Um, not that it, it helps quite a lot. I told him you cannot diminish uh, Palestinian national aspirations to a passport uh, which is anyway controlled by the Israelis who actually allow or don't allow the issuance of a Palestinian passport. And they are obviously controlling the checkpoints and we shouldn't, Bishop, we shouldn't forget the 700 kilometers of wall, yeah? In, right. in, yes. in East Jerusalem, occupied East Jerusalem. Yeah and occupied uh, uh, West Bank. This is quite serious. And, and despite the decision of the UN and the court against the wall, the wall is still there and it's still being used and is still a, a very serious oppressive tool against the economic lives of, of the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, definitely the very fact that Oslo was a clumsy, unprofessional, uh, agreement from the Palestinian point of view in front of very serious yeah. people from the side of the occupation doesn't help. Now, the question is, we can now criticize Oslo and say that it's a crime even. However, what do we do now? And li like what the bishop said, what do we do now? Now we need a un internal unity. Exactly. And secondly, we need to recruit uh, the international community. And this is what Bishop uh, Dr. Munib has been trying. His eminence has been explaining yeah. that the <coughs> position of the EU and the so-called Western world 
and the U.S. is immoral, to say the least. Yeah. They cannot continue to condone Israel's action and only say we condone, we uh, sorry, we condemn, and we uh, are we still believe in two-state solution, whereas they know for sure yeah. that the statistics show that by the hour the Israeli occupation is land grabbing, occupying, killing torturing, arresting more Palestinians by the hour, whereas the European community and the international community is only saying, oh, we condemn, we are in, in favor of the two-state solution. Very soon, even a Swiss cheese would, would look yeah, better course. than, than the uh, occupied lands. And I, I want to come back, you course. see, to the issue of, um, which I would like always to emphasize, we, are all, we have lived with the Jews mm. all the time, yes. you see, uh, the Jews were persecuted in Europe. Yes. Never Correct. in Palestine. Anti-Semitism is a European, yeah, is a European construct. Absolutely. And I want to, be sure, to make sure. And we lived, and we are ready to live with the Jews. Of we course. have no problem with absolutely. that, you see. And I speak on behalf of the Palestinian people. We have no absolutely. problem. Now, anti-Semitism, um, 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 we are even against it. Of course. Because anti-Semitism is based on hatred. And racism. And, and it's racism. It's the same. Uh, anti-Semitism is the same like Islamophobia. Correct. Or Christianophobia Correct. or Sinophobia. Correct. And for this reason, in Sabil Center, we have written... Which is, what is Sabil it? Sabil Center for Liberation Theology. Okay. Palestinian, we, Palestinian liberation, liberation theology. theology. We have written a document, mm -hmm. you know, from the Palestinian point of view, how do we understand anti-Semitism? And, and we, are, we are putting, we are understanding it uh, th uh, through the eyes of human rights Excellent. and through the understanding of the human <clears throat> rights. And that's very important for us because anti-Semitism um, should never be, you know, um, a sword on the neck whenever you speak for justice. So, uh, and whenever you criticize occupation or, or, you know, if I criticize the British government, I'm not anti-British, you see. Uh, and I have the right to criticize them if they have, you know, as a, as a, a bishop is also a moral authority. Yeah. And the moral authority should, uh, should criticize anything which humiliates human being and deprives them from their human dignity. That's our role, you know, as in the Christian church. And it's my right, but then I don't, I'm not, if I criticize the measures of occupation, it's not, I'm not anti-Semitic. I am against oppression, occupation, and, and injustice. And that's very, very important Absolutely. that we dare Absolutely. to speak about it yes. in, the, uh, in, uh, in Palestine in order the world will understand our point of view. We are, we never and we are not anti-Semitic, you see. Uh, on the contrary, we are for justice for every human being in the world. Um, I'd like to shed some light on the role of the Palestinian Christian community in terms of resisting occupation. But before that, I'd like to touch on um, a very important point. You mentioned the Arab and, um, and Muslim worlds, which yeah. are, you know, very fluid sort yes. of, uh, yeah. of, of concepts. But um, one thing that, you know, I as a media commentator, as a political analyst, one thing that uh, I always say, and I am a firm believer in, is that I have seen for myself how in various Arab countries that I've visited, um, how people can be at loggerheads and incredible, you know, intellectual and ideological conflict on virtually every issue. Mm. But the one thing that they always come together on is Palestine. Absolutely. And the same I could say for the Muslim world. I mean, when you're talking about the Muslim world, where from as far east as Indonesia to as far west as uh, Mauritania, for instance, the one thing that they can all safely and assuredly come together on is Palestine. I agree. But, and this is a big There's but. There's always a but, yeah. The thing is that we have the, uh, the stands and the uh, com uh, convictions of nations and people and then we have the official stands of regimes yes. and governments. Yes. And what we're seeing right now, and I talk about specifically the Arab world, and, and you mentioned a number of Arab countries, many of them 
are now hurriedly joining the line to normalize. There's now a, a queue of countries that want to normalize with Israel. Now, um, some might interpret this as you know, building commercial interests, as creating peace, as cultural exchange. But in reality, in reality, if you look at the, you know, the, the fine print, you realize that this is whitewashing Israeli crimes. Yes. And this is conceding on the rights of Palestinians. How do you see this? I mean, we're talking about now... No, we, we have got here a, a very eminent uh, uh, clergyman. Uh, I am not um, a, a religious uh, personality, but as, as a Palestinian academic, I can tell you that I do understand, as, as Arab Palestinian, I do understand um, the Holy New Testament, the Holy Quran. I, I uh, read them a few times and I can tell you that the actions of these leaders, of these uh, Islamic, non-Arab Islamic or Arab Islamic or Arab non-Islamic uh, regimes is immoral. Uh, they cannot, I mean, you cannot be a moral person, uh, no matter whether you are Muslim or Christian, and condone the Israeli occupation yeah. and not stand in favor of the Palestinians. Mm. This is just, uh, this is obscene what is happening now. The source, the main source of this is that these uh, regimes are undemocratic. Mm. They are unelected, and therefore they rush to protect their seats and their ruling elite uh, with uh, a few uh, technologies, whether we are talking about artificial intelligence or technology in general or uh, soft softwares for espionage and control and arms deals or uh, uh, new technologies when it comes to developing agriculture and water. So you find out that they are actually uh, worried about their own future rather than, the, uh, rather than the future of their own nations. This is why we see the chasm mm. between Arab and Islamic nations and Arab and Islamic regimes. Mm. This should be reconciled. And the more democratic process will take place in these states, the less injustice yeah. for Palestine will be. We need to try and find this route. But unfortunately, all these countries, I mean, we used to blame only the Americans and the Europeans for normalizing yeah. and accepting Israel. If now states, you know, Arab Muslim states, and in particular, Saudi Arabia, yeah. you know, the, the state which hosts the uh, Al-Haramayn, Al Al-Sharifayn, you know, uh, uh, this is obscene. How can, how can Saudi Arabia with Mecca and uh, al Medina um, reconcile with Israeli occupation, yeah. with Al-Haram al-Sharif, you know, and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, are under occupation with the most important and the first sacred church for Christianity, Palestinian Christians, uh, Kanisat al qiyama the Church of the Holy Supplica, is occupied where Palestinians, Muslims, as well as Christians alike are being harassed, uh, uh, are being aggressed, uh, are, being, are suffering, cannot move, cannot worship, cannot go through their lives. How can that be? This is something that needs to be uh, checked, uh, need, needs to be addressed. And I think that we certainly need to explain more and more from, from all sides. I, I don't, I don't differenti differentiate at all. Uh, the bishop, you heard him saying, I speak for all Palestinians, Christians and Muslims alike. And I do the same because we do not separate at all. We are one united people and, and nation, no matter what. It, I mean, we believe, all of those who believe, believe in one God. So, I mean, and this is very important. And, and to explain, because many of our listeners, I believe, are non-Arab Muslims, yes. possibly. If they know the Quran, they will see that the only surah in the Quran was dedicated for Mary, the yeah. mother of Jesus. Mm. And in fact, Jesus and Mary are mentioned nearly 90 times. Yes. Right. So Jesus, Christianity, Jerusalem are so important from an Islamic point of view right. to the extent that only a united struggle between Muslims and Christians and all Palestinians, Arabs, etc., 
can possibly implement or and bring justice to Palestine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why are, are there so many Muslims and Arabs in the world if they are really powerless? Yes. Mm -hmm. our, our position is very clear, you know. Um, um, I mean, the Christian churches and the Christians are very, in, in general, I yes. speak, you know. And even Palestinians in general, we, we believe that we have to stick to the Arab initiative of 2002. Mm. And we don't think that they have, it has changed, as some are saying. Mm. It didn't change. Where it says, first uh, establish Palestinian state with each Jerusalem, its capital, and then they can normalize. Yeah. I think then, then justice is there, mm. but not the opposite. That's, that's, you know, our position, and we are very clear on that, and we have, we have um, allowed others to heal our voice, because, um, because we care, you know, that Palestinians will get their own rights and their own state in order that we can, uh, we, uh, we can finish, you know, uh, decades of injustice, mm -hmm. decades, decades of, uh, um, <coughs> uh, uh, of humiliation, of oppression, you know, and, and bring, you know, uh, that Palestinians have the right to live their human and their national rights as any other nation. And I wonder why is the world closing their eyes? Why are the Arab world, some Arab countries closing their eyes? They have to think we are a normal nation and we need our, our God-given, you know, human and civil rights to live in our country. Tell me a little bit, if I may, uh, about the forms of resistance played by the Palestinian Christian community. I think, you know, um, when we want to discuss this, I think, you know, we had last, uh, 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 last uh, November, there, were, there was, you know, a conference mm. um, to speak on resistance, you know, and from this? the Christian, in Beit Sahur. In Beit Sahur. In Beit Sahur, in, you see. In, in in the, uh, just near Bethlehem. Yes. Near, Beth, near Bethlehem, you see. I think we, we have different points of view you know, and uh, f of resistance. Mm. Um, but, you know, also we have spoken that you cannot only see resistance from one point of view. For example, I believe in non-violent resistance, yes. you see, and that's my position yes. known all over the world, known uh, in my, among my people, yep. you see. Others may, dif may think different. I respect others, what they mm. think, uh, you see. But we have to think also that our presence at the moment, in Palestine itself, is in itself resistance. Hmm. You see, and the, you say sumud, sumud. The, the very fact that you're uh, there. That we have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you have to understand it also. You cannot take only one side, you know, of uh, of the struggle and say, this. I mean, to educate people uh, and to fight for this is resistance. Hmm. To to allow people to have hope in hope is resistance. Hmm. I think resistance have many, 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 you know. Uh, many, faces. Many, many faces, not one face, yeah. which some people are trying to put it for one face, and they, they uh, miss the target. I think, you know, we, I mean, keeping our churches and st struggling for, I mean, you have heard the heads of churches in the last uh, months, they have been very outspoken against occupation and, and against what's happening in, in, in Palestine. This is resistance. Actually, think, what you mentioned as well in the last few days, um, uh, Your Eminence, is the very fact that your one way of your resistance, which is anyway multifaceted, is the very fact that the churches in Palestine are the third employer after yeah. the exactly after the Palestinian National Authority and exactly. UNRWA, which mm. is which is a big form of resistance. And we don't only employ Christians. Actually, the overwhelming majority are Muslims. 50% of our employees are Christians, 50% Muslims. And we have nearly 10,000 employees, all the Christians, Orthodox, Catholics, Lutherans, and Anglicans. So what does this mean? So we are helping people to stay in the country, uh, strengthening their sumud, in order that they don't... That in itself is very important, you see. Every... Palestinian who immigrates is, uh, or if being Christian or Muslim, you see, is not good for our cause. Mm. You see, it, it, harms our, it, it harms our cause. We want our people to stay, to stay with the hope yeah. that justice is coming. 